Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we are going to do some problems involving the three power theorems we just learned. The secant, secant, the tangent, secant, and the chord, chord power theorems. Uh, so let's just go back and refresh our memory on the theorems again before we start the problems. So we have the chord, chord power theorem. Two chords of a circle intersect inside the circle and the product of the measures of the segments of one chord. So x times y is equal to the product of the measures of the segments of the other chord, a times b. Then we also said the tangent secant power theorem, which says that the tangent segment squared times the entire secant, or is equal to the entire secant segment, ad, times its external part, ac. So ab squared, the tangent squared, is equal to the uh, secant segment AD times AC, and of course they have to originate, uh, both the secant and the tangent have to originate from the same point. And then the last uh, power theorem is the secant secant power theorem, which says that if I have uh, two secants drawn from an external point outside the circle, then the uh, product of the entire secant times its external part, so AC times AB, is gonna be equal to the entire secant segment AE times its external part AD. All right, so let's take a look at some of the more difficult problems in the chapter. Uh, first one is uh, problem number 17. I have uh, what's given is concentric circles. So I have two circles here, uh, this circle, the smaller circle on the inside, and then the larger circle on the outside. They both have the same uh, they have both have the same center. So we want to find the measure of DE here and also DC. So how are we going to go about doing that? All right, so first we're going to take, we have also what's given in the diagram. So I know that three, so this point here, let's call this uh, G, do we have a G? G, and we'll call this E. So I know that GD times DE is three times X is going to be equal to and we'll make this uh, an H here, is going to be equal to HD times DC. So GD times DE is 3X, is equal to HD times DC, which is 2Y. So 3X is equal to 2Y, and I can rewrite Y in terms of X. Y is equal to 1.5X. Now I can move to the larger circle, and I can say that, let's say this is point I, ID, times df, so we're, now we're using the chord chord power theorem, id times df, or seven times x plus four, is equal to jd, which is five, times db, which is three plus y. So I have seven, seven times x plus four is equal to five times y plus three. So if I rewrite that, distribute the seven and the five respectively, I end up with an equation seven x plus 28 is equal to five y plus 15. Now I'm gonna take the value I have for y and I'm gonna substitute that in, uh, a value for y, I'm gonna substitute the value for y, which is 1.5, in for the value of y and I get five times 1.5 or 7.5 x. So I write seven x plus 28 is equal to 7.5 x plus 15. And then I just solve for x. Half an x is equal to 13, so x is equal to 26. And then I go back to solve for y. Uh, y is 1.5x or 39. So x is equal to 26. Uh, 26 is de, so that's the measure of x. And then I want to find dc, which is the measure of y, so y is equal to 39. Uh, we have four of these problems, so that's the first one. Let's move on to the second one. So 17, 18, 19, and 20, all from the book. All right, I have the radius of each circle uh, is three. So I have these smaller circles, the radii are all three. Uh, triangle WXY is equilateral. And uh, what we wanna do is we wanna find the length of WY. And then secondly, we wanna find the ratio of the perimeters of triangles ABC, PQR, and WXY. All right, so let's start with the first problem A first part of the problem. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw my a rectangle. Uh, and what I do is I, I'm gonna take, see this line WY is tangent to all these circles. So if I draw a radius to the point of tangency, I'm creating here a rectangle um, in this area. So I'm creating a rectangle here. 
Okay, so I've created my rectangle, and I can figure out the length from the center to the tangent. The point of tangency is 3. And then I can just add the distance from P to R. It's 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, radii. So 4 times 3, because the length of each radii or radius is 3, gives me 12 units from P to R. So now all I have to do is figure out the distance from W to this point of tangency here. Uh, and it's going to be the same as y to the point of tangency here. Well, if I take a look at this, <clears throat> um, I have 3 here. I know that uh, from y to p bisects the angle. I have an equilateral, equiangular uh, triangle on w, x, y. So I know as I bisect this angle, I'm left with a measure of 30 degrees here and 30 degrees here. So I've just created a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And the side opposite the 60 degrees is going to be W, and let's just call this K. And I know the length of PK, which is the side opposite the 30 degree angle, is 3. So the side opposite the 60 degree angle is going to be 3 times root 3. So WK is 3 root 3. So you have to remember uh, your 30, 60, 90 triangle properties. Remember, so I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Um, if this is my 30 degree angle, uh, this is x, this is x root 3, and then my hypotenuse is going to be 2x. Okay, so now I can figure out the distance from y, uh, y to w. It's just 12 plus 2 times 3 root 3, or wk, and let's call this uh, ly. So kl, which is 12, plus wk, plus ly, gives me 12 plus 6 root 3. So that's the answer to the first part of the problem. All right, second part of the problem. Uh, so I'm going to figure out the perimeter of ABC is just 3, the radius is 3, plus 3 is 6, 6, 6, the radius of ABC is 16. The perimeter of PQR, and let's do this in black. So PQR. is going to be 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. So that's four threes. And I know PQ, QR, and PR are all the same length. So 3 times 12 gives me a perimeter of PQR of 36. And then WXY we figured out was, or actually WY is 12 plus 6 root 3. So I multiply that by 3 because it's an equilateral triangle and I get 36 plus 18 root 3. So the relationship between ABC, PQR, and WXY is going to be 1 to 2 to 2 plus root 3. So 1 to 2, 2 times 18 is 36, to 2 plus root 3. All right, moving on to our third problem. All right, the diagram as shown, find the value of X. So X is this distance here, the external portion of the secant. And then we have to figure out what restrictions must be placed on y in this problem. All right, so let's first determine the value of x. So I know I'm going to label the uh, dist distance here uh, of this chord um, as z. So between these two points on the circle, this distance is going to be called z. So I know that uh, by the tangent secant power theorem, that y or z plus y times y, so the entire secant segment uh, times its external portion is equal to the tangent squared. So z plus y times y is equal to 8 squared, or y squared times z, uh, y squared plus yz is going to be equal to 64. All right. So I also know if I take a look at this side of the equation, uh, the left-hand side, I have, again, actually I have two secants. So now I have y plus z times y is equal to 12 plus x times x. So first I used a tangent secant power theorem. Now I'm using a secant secant power theorem. Uh, and I know that z plus y times y is equal to 64. So I substitute that value in for this value here. And I get 64 is equal to 12x by distributing the x here. 12x plus x squared. I use my zero product property uh, to solve for x. I have x squared. I subtract 64 from both sides. x squared plus 12x minus 64 is equal to zero. 
I factor this and I get x plus 16 times x minus 4 is equal to 0, and x is equal to negative 16 or 4. I know that x cannot be a negative value, so x ends up being 4. All right, so the value of this external part of the secant segment is 4. And let's see what restrictions we're going to need to place on uh, the value of y. All right, so y needs to be less than 8 since y is, as a secant segment is less is going to be less in terms of distance or shorter in terms of distance than the tangent. So y has to be less than or af has to be shorter than ab. All right, so the first restriction is going to be y has got to be less than 8. All right, second restriction a little bit more complicated. So let's walk you through this. Remember we said 2y plus, actually 2y plus z is going to be less than 24. And then we get that by the triangle inequality theorem. How did we get that? Well, I know that x here is 4. I know that this distance here, this uh, internal portion of the secant segment is going to be 12. So 12 plus 4, this length here is 16. And this length here is 8. All right, so the entire length of this uh, chord, or actually this uh, segment, y plus z plus y, has to be less than 24 by the triangle inequality theorem. Remember, the sum of any two sides of a triangle has to be greater than a third side. So 16 plus 8 has to be greater than 2y plus z, or 2y plus z is going to be less than 24. Now, we also derive from the prior analysis that uh, uh, y squared plus yz is equal to 64. So y squared plus yz is equal to 64. Uh, so we have y squared plus yz is equal to 64. Now I can solve for uh, z and then substitute it back into my inequality and then figure out what the restrictions are. So I end up with, uh, first I'm going to subtract the y. So I have z plus y is equal to 64. I'm sorry, divide by y. z plus y is equal to 64 divided by y. And then I subtract the y so I get z is equal to 64 divided by y minus y. So z is equal to 64 divided by y minus y. And then I'm going to take this uh, inequality and I'm going to substitute the value of y that I got for z in for z. And I end up with 2y, so the original 2y, plus the substituted value for z, which is 64 over y, uh, 64 over y minus y, is less than 24. And I do that by substitution. Now I'm just going to solve uh, for the equation or simplify it. I have only one y, 2y minus y leaves me with one y, plus 64 over y is less than 24. Then I'm going to multiply uh, all terms in the inequality by y. So I get y squared plus 64 is less than 24y. I subtract 24y from both sides and I have y squared, y squared minus 24y plus 64 is less than zero. Now, I have to use a quadratic formula in order to solve. I just treat this as if it were zero for now. And I end up with y is greater than 12 minus 4 root 5, and y is less than 12 plus 4 root 5. So you can use a uh, quadratic formula to figure out uh, the solutions for y. You're not going to fact, you're not going to be able to factor using your um, diamond and box process. And then I take a look at these values. Uh, y has to be greater than 12 minus 4 root 5, okay. And then y has to be less than 12 plus 4 root 5. Now, 12 plus 4 root 5 is greater than 8, right? Remember, we said that y has to be uh, less than 8 uh, because as a secant, it's going to be less than the tangent, which originates from the same point. So uh, this value then becomes irrelevant because it's greater than 8. So I just cross this off. So now I have y is less than 8 but greater than 12 minus 4 root 5. Right, this process was a little bit complicated. Hopefully you were able to follow along. You can always go back and rewind and re-listen to what I just went through. All right, last problem, number 20. Uh, I have AT uh, is equal to 12, so this segment here. I have a tangent line in green, uh, AT, that is tangent to the circle at point T. And then I have AB, uh, which is perpendicular to AT, and AB is equal to 8. So I want to find the diameter of the circle and the distance uh, from the center to point A. This is a little, a little tricky problem, too. Um, this is how we do it. So you have to think about, we're trying to use chord-chord power theorem or a secant tangent power theorem or a secant-secant power theorem. 
because that's what we've learned in this chapter. So how do we do that? All right, so I'm going to draw a chord, and the chord is going to run this length here. And I know the distance uh, from, and also I'm going to draw a diameter that runs right through the chord and intersects at T. So right through X, uh, I'm sorry, right through, let's call this O, circle O, right through the center of the circle and intersects at point T. And what it does is it divides this chord into two congruent segments. And I know that they're both equal to 12, right? I have a distance here, 12. So B to this point of intersection is also going to be 12 units. So I have 12 and 12. And then I know that the distance T to the point of intersection is going to be 8 because it's the opposite side of a rectangle that we've just created. So 8 and 8, 12 and 12. I have this rectangle here. So now I can figure out what the... Um, what the distance of x is, x is not the entire diameter, x is the distance from this point here to the point of intersection of the chord. Uh, and I know that uh, x times 8 is going to be equal to 12 times 12 by the chord chord power theorem. So we had to draw something in order to figure this out. So 12 times 12, 144 is equal to 8x. Uh, x ends up being equal to 18. The diameter ends up being 18 plus 8 or 26. Right, so now that we have uh, this length here, the diameter is 26, we know that the radius is going to be half of that, or 13. So we can find out the length from the circle to A. And we're going to label the point of intersection uh, between the center and the uh, circle uh, as C. And then, of course, A is this uh, the point for the right angle. So I know uh, I can use my Pythagorean theorem because I know that the radius is going to be perpendicular to the tangent line. So OT and TA form a right angle. So I have a 12 and a 13 sided leg, and I need to figure out the distance of OA, and then subtract the radius OC from that distance. So first I find out that OA is going to be uh, the square root of 12 squared plus 13 squared. 12 squared is 144, 13 squared 169. OA is going to be the square root of that value, 300 root 313. Right, now that I know that CA, the distance between the circle and A, is going to be the entire length OA, which is 300, uh, the square root of 313, minus the radius OC, which is 13. So CA ends up being the square root of 313 minus 13. All right, lots of talking on my part. I know these were a couple last tough problems, so hopefully you got it. Uh, if you didn't, you can go back and, again, revisit or relearn the three different power theorems. Uh, and then you can come and join us in the next edition of Otten Math. Uh, we're going to take on some more uh, problems and concepts involving circles.